What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Sandy Alcantara, who had 7 Ks and 6 innings, giving up 4 runs. Though he gave up 4 runs, his stuff looked pretty decent. He had these wicked sliders, this two-seamer that ran 19 inches, as well as these high velo change-ups. He faced Dakota Hudson, who only had 1K in 3 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had this nasty slider. Aaron Savali had 3Ks in 5 and a third innings, giving up 2 runs, and had these beautiful curveballs. He faced Dick Mountain, who only had 1K in 5 and 2 thirds innings, and got the K on this sick curveball. Brandon Belak had 4Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up only one hit and no runs. He had this bowel locking slider. He faced Austin Gomber, who had 5Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs, and had these curveballs. John Gray had this mix of sliders and sweepers on his way to 4Ks in 4 and a third scoreless innings. He faced Zach Letello at 4Ks in 3 and a third innings, giving up one run, and had this dirty splitter. Graham Ashcraft had 3Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and had this nasty slider, as well as this cutter for a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Ryan Nelson had 5Ks in 7 innings, giving up 2 runs, and had this change up and cutter. He faced Charlie F. and Morton, who had 4Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, and had these wicked curveballs with 3,130 and 3,131 RPMs. Eduardo Rodriguez had 7Ks in 7 innings, giving up 2 runs. Rodriguez relied mostly on his fastballs, including this one that was painted, and also worked in this slider. He battled Ryan Yarbrough, who had 4Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 3 runs, and had this slow curveball, as well as this slow changeup. Kyle Hendricks had 5Ks in 6 innings, giving up only 1 run. He got his Ks mostly on two seamers and change-ups, including this cut change-up. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Hendricks's cut change versus his regular change-up release. And you see that cut change-up is a four-seam change-up, and his regular change-up is a two-seamer, and that gets a lot more run. Colin Ray had three Ks in five innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this sweeper. He faced Christopher Sanchez, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up only one run and got Ks on this slider and changeup. Justin Verlander had an outstanding outing with 7 Ks in 8 innings, giving up only one run. He relied on these hammer curveballs and wicked sliders and got this White Castle special to burger, coincidentally. And again, a White Castle special with three disgusting sliders in a row for a K. He faced Tukey Toussaint, who had this painted 95 mile an hour fastball. Chase Silseth was really good yesterday with 10 Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up only one run on four hits. He got his Ks on a combination of fastballs and sliders, and even had this Fat Joe slider to LeMahieu that got LeMahieu to lean back. Yu <laughs> Darvish was great yesterday with seven Ks and six scoreless innings, giving up four hits. And he had these mid-90s fastballs, this wicked slider, and this pretty slow curveball, as well as this curveball that was kind of a cross-up. Darvish also worked in some dirty sweepers. And here's an overlay of his fastball and sweeper. And you can see how that sweeper kind of looks like a fastball on the way to the plate, except just as you're ready to swing, it disappears. And Darvish faced Jose Barrios, who I'm going to give a tie for the filthiest starter of the day yesterday. Barrios went six innings with nine Ks, nice, giving up two runs, and had this sick two-seamer, as well as these absolutely disgusting breaking balls and even worked in some mean change-ups and got Machado to bend the knee on one. And check out this overlay that shows why, when Barrios is on, he is so good. Here's a breaking ball out of the zone that gets a take, and then Barrios follows it up with a two-seamer that starts more off the plate than that breaking ball. And as a hitter, you see a pitch in that location, you're thinking, I'm taking that one too. And instead, it ends up a two-seamer that runs back to the plate. A great example of tunneling by Jose Barrios. My other two filthiest starters pitched against each other. We have Luis Castillo with 11 Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had this overpowering fastball up to 98 miles an hour, as well as these absolutely wicked sliders. And we got a couple of famous La Piedra fist pump K struts. And he battled Kenta Maeda, who was also extremely good, with nine Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs. 
Maeda relied on his fastballs, sliders, as well as his splitter, and his splitter was really the story of this game. He got 12 whiffs on his splitter, which was a 60% whiff rate for the game. And here's an overlay of Maeda's fastball and splitter, and you can see what hitters have to deal with. Perfect tunneling, and that splitter dives to the dirt. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Nick Sandlin had these sliders. Yanir Cano had this wicked changeup for a sword. David Bednar had this dirty curveball. Felix Bautista had this 101 mile an hour flames for a sword. Cue the saxophone. Alexis Diaz had this slider and fastball. Alex Lang had these curveballs. You gotta respect that turtleneck. Aaron Loop had this changeup. Trevor Richards had this sick changeup. Colin McHugh had these filthy sweepers. Yoel Piamps had these sliders. Devin Williams had these UFO airbenders. Josh Hader had this overpowering stuff. Alex Spees, who's nasty, made his major league debut and had this cutter for a strike him out, throw him out, double play for his first major league K. And also had this awesome Expelliarmus slider. Expelliarmus. In the at bat of the night, Hobie Milner faced off against Bryce Harper. Six consecutive pitches that Harper just stood there like a statue. Can I help you find something, Mr. Harper? No thanks, I'm just looking. I expected at some point the Phillies might build a statue of Bryce Harper, but I didn't realize it'd be so soon or in the batter's box. I have a few explanations for this. One is that Bryce Harper is a member of the Screen Actors Guild and just is on strike. The other is that Bryce Harper was sick before the game with 101 fever and just didn't feel well or decided to conserve energy. Maybe Harper dropped some acid? You know, Doc Ellis style, and saw some orange polka dot dragons coming at him? Or maybe Wiz Khalifa had some leftover shrooms from his first pitch the other day. Or maybe, as Hobie Milner said, the scouting report on Milner was that he was going to throw four balls before he'd throw three strikes, and Harper just wanted to test that theory. Either way, this was really bizarre. Do you have questions about what... What was going on there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I after the first couple pitches, I mean, it was apparent he was taking, and um, I don't know. I guess the scouting report, where he was going with the uh, I was going to throw four balls, four three strikes approach. I mean, um, yeah, that's really all I can say. That's what it, that's what it looked like, and so I just filled it up after that. I just tried to throw fastballs down the middle after that. But my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Yoan Duran, who unleashed a holy hell of fastballs and curveballs. His fastballs hit 104 several times, and those curveballs were absolutely deadly. Speaking of deadly, Duran also hit Julio Rodriguez with this 103-mile-an-hour fastball. I love Julio's reaction to this, because if it was me in the box, you would have seen a flashback to yesterday's moment of zen from George Brett, because I would have pooped myself. I shit my pants last night. <laughs> I did. Here's an overlay of Duran's 104 mile an hour fastball with that 90 mile an hour hammer curveball. And yeah, I don't know how anybody ever hits this. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. The Rocky scoreboard operator is an absolute legend. I'll let you read through these yourself. What's up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with the same game parlay of Ty Walker for 5Ks or more and Corbin Burns for 7Ks or more and top it off with Blake Snell for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 